Cletus Cassidy and Carnage, one of, if not the, most psychotic symbiote ever, usually focused on just spreading pure chaos. But what if his goals were a little more structured and he wanted world domination instead? Well, let's find out. Now the story picks up at Doverington, Colorado, at a meat packing plant, where we see the inspector looking at all the cow carcasses, saying what's going on here? Some of the meat coming down the line is very gnarly, before getting to the back of the facility and hearing laughing, and with the voice saying sorry, we got hungry, with us seeing the voice being none other than Cletus Cassidy, being surrounded with blood, cow carcasses, and human bodies. And so the instructor instinctively tries to call the police, but with Cletus saying, you know what, don't bother, I'll take it. And the instructor replying, take what? Everything, Cletus says as a carnage symbiote, it forms around him, grabbing all of the nearby cow carcasses. We then move over to see a father rushing back home, yelling to his wife Hannah, telling her to get away from the sink, and how it comes through the sink, before rushing off to find his two other children. But he did not get there in time, as we see parts of the carnage symbiote coming from the drain attaching itself and taking over these two children, with one of the little boys saying help me before fully succumbing to the symbiote and attacking the father. Panning out we then see the entire town in chaos, with smoke blooming from different areas and more infections starting to take place. But it looks like there has been one escapee. Unfortunately, Carnage allowed him to escape because he was carrying a note and a message, which at a US emergency response center, it's revealed that it was carved into his very skin. So the government does what it does best during these situations and decides to call in some professionals, some heroes, the Avengers, or at least a quick standby team to take this threat of Carnage out fast. As we then cut over the Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Hawkeye at a Avengers base goofing around until Captain America comes in saying it's serious, Carnage is back. And with Spider-Man first saying, what, are you sure? CIA confirmed it, small Colorado town east of Denver, Captain America replies to him, which then Spider-Man decides to give Ben Grimm a call, otherwise known as The Thing, saying he might have something they will need during this fight, and then they head off to not waste any more time and secure any more casualties. After picking up The Thing, we see he brought a sonic disruptor, something the symbiotes are notoriously weak against, sound, and as they are on the Quinjet arriving to the town, they mentally prepare with Spider-Man saying, you don't know him, Logan. If we attack him outright, he could start slaughtering civilians. And so as they land and get out, they see it's pretty quiet with not too many people on the street. And the people that they do see on the street are repeating the same things. Big smiles, big, big smiles. And as they walk further into the town, Wolverine uses his keen sense of smell, saying everyone here stinks of fear and craziness. As they then walk into a new group of people, shouting the same things, big smiles until one girl is able to whisper out help us amongst the chanting and then they see him Cletus Cassidy and as Hawkeye draws an arrow at him he is stopped as Cletus is carrying and holding a baby and Cletus then replies I don't have a baby I've got my baby they're all mine get it they all belong to me before we see little bits of the carnage symbiote wrap itself around the citizens and then he starts to explain me and the missus the carnage symbiote is thinking about expanding the family saying that Carnage Symbiote devoured 4,000 cattle to increase its mass before we see it boom out of the sewers, revealing that the Carnage Symbiote has not only grown in size, but power. And so the thing, packed with his sonic disruptor, takes the first shot. But unfortunately, we see as it's pretty ineffective, as a symbiote just blitzes straight for them, covering everybody in its goo before they have time to escape and get out of the way. But because Spider-Man is pretty well versed in symbiotes, he knows not to touch or get this stuff over him. So he's the only one not completely trapped. Well, that is until Carnage himself runs up and pits Spider-Man in a chokehold, saying you shouldn't have brought your girlfriend, Spider-Boy. This is between you and me, or at least it was, before we see this Avengers team completely taken over by the symbiote, now being controlled and under the effect of Carnage himself, with Spider-Man helplessly watching. And back at the US Emergency Response Center, they see as Spider-Man's gone offline, and that that was a last hero, and that they're completely dark now, and that the president himself is freaking out. He wants a contingency plan within the hour. And with the man in charge of this operation saying, tell him to relax, we've got five. As we see, they're looking at a monitor with many of the different symbiotes in the Marvel Universe. One such as Venom, Toxin, Anti-Venom, Scorn, and Hybrid. Which Hybrid is an interesting one, which we will definitely come back to later. But getting back into the thick of it, we now pick up with Carnage, who is singing the Itsy Bitsy Spider, to Spider-Man, who impressively has gotten out of the situation. 
for now at least, which is a feat all on its own. As you'll see, Carnage is no one to be messed with and is someone who's generally and realistically above Spider-Man. Plus him able to outrun some heavy hitters and top tier fighters such as The Thing, Wolverine, and Captain America is pretty impressive. But part of it is due to the fact that Carnage is in control, not the individual people. So as Spider-Man points out, he's not used to adamantium claws and a bow, but he's got Cap's uppercut down, which connects and hits Spidey, throwing him off his game for half a second, which is valuable time in this situation, as a carnage-enhanced thing jumps up, ready to pounce on him. But out of nowhere, we hear a truck honking behind them, and as the thing lands on it, someone throws a Molotov into the mix, blowing it up and blowing the carnage symbiote off of the thing, which momentarily lets him gain control. But not for long as Cletus just wraps more symbiote around him. But this valuable distraction allows Spider-Man to get away with the people who just helped them. But moving over to a government facility for a second, we see Scorn, who is kind of like a symbiote and technology hybrid, or like a synthetic symbiote. Unlike normal symbiotes, who can bond with humans and living organisms, Scorn can bond with technology, kind of like Upgrade from Ben 10, in which she can infuse and make better. We then see that same general come up to her, briefing her about the situation with Carnage, against the orders from the other people in the room, saying she's not ready. But as you can see with the situation with Carnage, they're gonna need all the help they can get. So she reluctantly joins. But she's not alone, as we see the other part of the team that the government is going to send in, Hybrid. Now Hybrid is an interesting one, like I've said before, as Hybrid is, well, a hybrid of four individual symbiotes joined together, but they were diffused into miniature versions of themselves, with each only being a part of the symbiote and not the full thing. So we have Lasher, who is a symbiotic enhanced war dog. We have Agony, we have Phage, and lastly we have Riot. Moving back over to Spider-Man though, we see the people who helped him escape and how they didn't originally go to help him, but they had family left in the town who they wanted to rescue. But unfortunately, we see that didn't happen. So they're driving back to the family farm estate just outside of the town. And on this farm, there's a bunch of wildlife, such as lions, gorillas, giraffe, etc. And as they get in, they start talking over what is happening, explaining the situation to Spider-Man, saying how the carnage symbiote got in the water supply and the drainage surrounding the town. But this estate is only safe because they have their own well and a powerful electric fence, which the carnage symbiote doesn't mix too well with. And as this is going on, we see the symbiote strike team that the government is putting together, getting briefed on their mission, saying they have until sunrise to get in and sort out the problem, or they're torching the entire town with everybody still there. There. And as this is going on, we see a funny scenario of Carnage just chilling at a bar, with the symbiote-controlled Avengers just playing pool, and with Cletus talking to one of the children, but with the mother Hannah from the beginning, saying, please stop doing this, give me my children back. Cletus takes pity on her and offers her a deal, saying if she willingly submits to the Carnage symbiote control and murder their father, he'll let the children go and keep them in peace. And with Hannah the mother not really seeing any other way out, she agrees. And with Cletus not only giving her a piece of the symbiote, but the children, they set out to go find him and take him down. Picking up hours later into the night, we see the symbiote operative team being silent dropped into the town, trying to track and piece together what happened, all while Carnage has most of the town gathered in one of the churches, making them literally pull out their own teeth for his own sick twisted pleasure and obviously not liking what is going on with the town and an impressive feat of pure willpower by captain america he's able to slightly break free of the symbiote's control but only able to mutter out words saying going to pit you down and with carnage simply replying this isn't like last time when you and your friends quote unquote pit me down with the power of love or whatever it's all hatred and darkness in doverton for instance last night i made a mother and her children promise to kill their father there is no love here with a sick grin on his face. But back at the estate, we see one of the people waking Spider-Man up, saying something is happening. The sheriff, or the father, wants to open the fence, and obviously as that's a bad idea, as it's one of the only things protecting him. In this instance, him being a father overrides any logical thinking he has, and he drives two of them, as his wife and children are apparently at the gate. But with the rest of those survivors there obviously not wanting to open it, he has no choice but to ram the gate saying that's my family and as he does ram the gate but is hurt from the impact we see hannah saying we have to say goodbye now the kids it's the only way for me to keep the kids i have to before we see her transforming into a symbiote ripping the car door off getting ready to kill the father but before she's able to we see spider-man launch through the window grabbing her saving him but not before the two symbiote children jump on him and distract him as Hannah gets right back up and lunge towards the father with Hannah gaining momentary control again explaining the situation to him saying he told me I have to kill you or he's going to get the kids and with the father 
pitting their lives above his, he says do it, absolutely sure within his own sacrifice. But just then, Carnage himself takes control back, saying no, she can't do this, your wife ruined it for everyone, as he calls her symbiote and the two children back saying now he's just going to eat them. Say goodbye, Eric, which is the father. And with the father obviously shook, saying he's going to kill them. He's going to kill my family. To Spider-Man, Spider-Man says, no, he's not. I promise. But will Spider-Man make good on his promise? Will he fail? Will Carnage succeed in spreading his symbiote influence over the earth? Looks like we'll find out next time, as that is the end of the issue and the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to always stay tuned for more videos coming your way.